Outcomes for patients with advanced colorectal cancer have improved drastically, particularly for patients receiving multiple lines of therapy. As we develop a deeper understanding of disease biology, our ability to personalize therapy throughout the disease course continues to improve. In this OncLive peer exchange discussion, personalized strategies for advanced colorectal cancers, I am joined by an amazing panel of experts in GI medical oncology. Today, we are going to look at abstracts from the ASCO 2019 meeting, and we'll discuss how these new findings will impact individualized patient care. I'm Dr. John Marshall, Chief of the Division of Hematology Oncology at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital and Professor of Medicine and Oncology at Lombardi's Comprehensive Cancer Center in Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Participating today are our distinguished panel, and what a distinguished panel we've got. Kat, Dr. Kathy Ng, Professor of Medicine, Co-Director of the GI Oncology Program at the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Kathy, welcome. Thank you. Dr. Tanios Bakai Saab, Tony, Professor, Mayo Clinic, College of Medicine and Science and Consultant at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Tony, welcome. Thank you. Dr. Dustin Deming, Associate Professor at the University of Wisconsin's Carbone Cancer Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Welcome. Thank you. And last but not least, my good friend, Dr. Michael Morris, Professor of Medicine and GI Medical Oncologist at the Duke Cancer Institute in Durham, North Carolina. Michael, welcome. Thank you, John. So thanks, everybody, for taking time to join us today to uh, really dive into the newest stuff that's going on in colorectal cancer. And Dustin, I'm going to pick on you first. We're going to talk a bunch about uh, new innovations in adjuvant therapy. Some new data was presented here. But before we dive into that, I want you to kind of set our current standards for early stage, stage two and three colon cancer. Fire away. So, so when we're thinking about adjuvant therapy for stage uh, two, stage three colon cancer, when we're looking at you know, what is the risk of this patient, uh, first, first for stage three, the, the node positivity is really um, what drives the risk for that particular patient population. So once you have positive nodes, and I know I'm just jumping right in, do you then yeah. not care about the other stuff, or is once you're in nodes, you're in nodes? So to some extent, you still care, but largely the nodes are really what's going to drive the, the risk and um, really want you to um, go for uh, adjuvant chemotherapy to Fair some enough. extent. Fair enough. Node count matter? Node count does matter. Um, so when we're, and I think we'll get into to this in more detail, but when we're thinking about higher risk and low risk stage three, um, the node positivity, um, whether we're talking N1 or N2 disease, really matters. So drill down on that a little bit. What do you mean by that? So those patients who have just a few nodes, so less than four nodes, uh, we would typically think of as a lower risk patient. Those with greater than, than that, we would think particularly as a potentially high risk population. Yeah, uh, Mike, do we need, you know, what's our denominator? here? How yeah. obsessed are we about the denominator of nodes still? Well, well obviously, uh, there are a number of factors that go into the number of nodes retrieved, and, and obviously there's a minimal number we're interested in in stage two, but even in stage three, the number of negative nodes is very important. I've, always, of I've always debated, that, what, you know, is it the surgeon's fault, is it the pathologist's fault, or is it the patient's fault? Yeah, it's biology. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I mean, clearly, uh, we're in a, an era now that I think uh, pathologists know to look for nodes. Now, whether people choose to go beyond the required number, 12, 13, 14, depending on which study you, uh, you follow, is debatable. But um, I think the, um, uh, you know, clearly there is, is a biologic uh, story going on when there's a large number of negative nodes that are retrieved. Yeah. Now, Dustin, is, uh, I, I'm assuming all our stage three patients are still candidates for chemotherapy. And as you say, we'll get into that a little bit. How do you assess for stage two? What are your key things you look at there? So stage two, it, it's actually, in my opinion, a very personal decision. And so there's a lot of things that go into um, determining whether or not we should think about chemotherapy for patients. And what are Pure some of those things that you sort of bundle into that? So purely from a risk standpoint, we think about T4 um, lesions, we think about perforation, obstruction, poor differentiation as potential markers of risk. Um, there's also some data about those patients who don't have their 12 or 13 lymph nodes evaluated um, as a potentially a higher risk population as well. Yeah, Kathy, I struggle with this group because, you know, this high risk group, we know they have a worse prognosis, in some cases worse than some stage three mm -hmm. patients. But our data is not really consistent here about adjuvant therapy in stage two helping all that much. What's your thought on that? 
Well, I think, you know, I think it's still a personal decision between you and the patient, and it does require a discussion. A lot, large amount of the data historically in the past did not demonstrate a significant benefit for stage two, but then we identified what we considered high risk based upon the data from Mosaic. And then I think from this year's ASCO, we're also looking at that once again, although it still remains a bit unclear.